<laughs> okay, welcome back, everybody, to my very uh, dimly red-lit fanfiction reading dungeon, w which just happens to be the same room I review One Piece in on a weekly basis. Go figure. Um, all right, you clicked on the video. You know what this is going to be. But just for a little backstory, in case you don't know... For my 200,000 subscriber special, which was last year, it was like last November, I said I was going to review, or I was going to read, a Luffy x Nami Lemon fanfiction. Why? Well, I did it back in the Bleach days. I picked out a few of these uh, Lemony fanfics to read about, like, Bleach characters. Like, there was uh, there was an Ichigo Rukia one, there was an Ichi Ihime one, there was an Ichigo Grimjo, uh, <laughs> Yaoi, that was a lot of fun. So, um... Yeah, th those were fun, and I haven't done one for One Piece yet, so I thought that'd be good. And uh, the reason I picked Luffy and Nami is just because it was pretty obvious. You know, they're, they're right there. They're main characters. A lot of people already shipped them. I thought there'd be some fun lemons out there. Um, the reason I didn't do it back then, though, is I, do I couldn't find one that really spoke to me. You know, I couldn't find one that really just had the thing that I wanted. And I don't know really what it was that I wanted, but I just couldn't find it. I couldn't pin it down. It's one of those nebulous things. Um, so after I couldn't find one, I thought, maybe I'll try writing my own. But then I realized I suck at writing. Uh, you know, just not just fan fiction, but I suck at writing in general. I've, I've, I've tried several times to write, like, you know, short stories or something. I'm just not good at it. I'm much better at, at video format. This is my, this is my muse. Um, so finally I decided it's like, fuck it, and I'll just, I'll pick one out. And I found one that was really good. It was just, the reason I didn't do it back then is because this one was very long. That was another thing. A lot of these fanfics run extremely long with multiple chapters in some cases. So we're not going to get to the entire fanfic in this uh, video. So if you want to read the whole thing, uh, go and check out the link in the description below and that'll take you to fanfiction.net. Um, once again, I'm not here to criticize the person who wrote this as, you know, work. I'm not here to, like, you know, make fun of it or anything. I'm just here to read a fanfic. Uh, this was a very well-written one, actually. So, yeah. Um, it is a lemon, so so, you know where this is gonna go. Uh, I've read through it a little bit. I haven't read the whole thing, so I don't know how explicit it's going to get. But uh, okay, let's roll with it. And for one more thing before I go, you know, don't don't take it too seriously. I know that there might be some people that might get on the comments and be like, I can't believe that you would think Lu this could happen to Luffy and Nami. This Oda doesn't do these kind of things. He's not going to make a relationship between the Straw Hats. Like, yes, I know. I know perfectly well that this series is not going to end with Luffy and Nami having sex on the Thousand Sunny. I, I'm, I'm at least 99.3% sure that's not going to happen, but let's just get into it, all right? So this is a fanfic uh, titled Stormy Feelings, and it was written by Moulong Rouge32, and uh, warning sexual content, don't read if you are a wee little babe. So you little, you little babes out there, you get going. Um, all right, and let's just get right into it. Okay. Crack! Rumble! She jerked out of sleep. Another bright flash illuminated the room for the briefest of seconds, before plunging her into darkness once more. Her heart was racing, and the sheet suddenly felt hot and constricting against her bare skin. Nami sleeps naked! I don't think anybody here should be surprised about that at all in the slightest. Navi sleeps straight up naked. She hurriedly kicked them aside onto the floor, not in the mood for dealing with such things in her confused and disoriented state. The air was so muggy, she swore that if she took out one of her maps, it would become damp and tear. Okay, that's an interesting comparison, but okay. She gasped for breath, not finding enough oxygen to slow her beating heart. I'm sorry, I don't know if this was the intention, but from this first paragraph, you know, the way that she um, interprets Nami, like, you know, panting and trying to gasp for breath, I immediately, I'm just thinking of Nami's heaving chest. So that's the image that's now in my head, and now it's all in yours as well. Then it was quiet for a brief moment, the calm before the storm, she thought. Sure enough, a minute later, the wind picked up drastically in the wind and the speed and started to whip around angrily at the cabin walls, making the rigging groan loudly in complaint. Who steers the sunny at night? I guess they would always have to have somebody that's at the helm, because you'd, you'd figure just everybody going to sleep at once on the sunny... That wouldn't be a good idea. I mean, you could anchor the ship, but it's it's the Grand Line. It's not gonna, you know, whatever. I guess that's that's just 
too much realism here. We're trying we're trying to get to a point where Nami and Luffy are gonna bone, and it, I, I I cut this fanfic down, but it's already eight pages long. So I need to get into it. I can't stop. You know, we need to get into it. You know what I mean? All right. So, uh, yeah, then came the rain, pelting the small porthole like so many fingers that it requested to be let inside. The ship tossed and turned in the undulating ocean waves. Ooh, only two paragraphs in to use the word undulating. I suspect we will hear this several times more throughout this. Rising to the tippy top before going on a wild, wide down, a wild ride down again. It was just as she predicted. Earlier that day, she had sensed the drastic decrease in barometric pressure, signaling the coming of this storm. It's, it's gonna happen, alright? We're, we're building to it, alright? We're only into the third paragraph, alright? Didn't you always want, you know, discussions of barometric pressure in your porn? Absolutely, absolutely. She knew that it wouldn't hit until later that evening when everyone was supposed to be sleeping, so she had ordered the men to furl the sails and fasten down any loose objects. Batten down the mizzen mast, if you know what I mean. Um, however, sleeping through it was going to be harder than she had thought. Perhaps she had just woken up from a nightmare and the storm had bridged her horrible dream with reality. Perhaps it had reminded her of a stormy night, a stormy night as a child alone and afraid of her room at Arlong Park. Or both. Whatever the reason, she was now thoroughly upset. Okay, so Nami, is, she's, she's asleep in her room and the, the, you know, the, the storm's raging outside and lightning's crashing and it's just, she wakes up and she's hot. You know, and she's, she gets out of bed and she's just feeling, you know, dizzy and disoriented. She glanced over at Robin's bed and wasn't surprised to see, and, and wasn't surprised to see the bed nearly made and its occupant missing. Ever since her and Frankie had become an item and told the rest of the crew that she had a habit of spending most nights with him in his room. Okay, okay, so, Robin and Frank, F Robin, it happened, it's a thing. I've been a fan of that. I think they would make a cute couple. I know some people are just like, there's no way, but I think opposites attract in a lot of senses. I think that would be great. And also, you know, you never forget when a woman grabs your balls and squeezes them tightly. It's a traumatic moment filled with a lot of pain, but you never forget it, is what I'm saying. In fact, I could totally see Frankie coming up to Robin later, like, or they're just exchanging, like, they're alone on the ship, like, everybody else is, like, they, they eat their dinner and everyone else leaves, and it's just Robin and Frankie there, maybe washing the dishes or helping out or whatever, and, and Frankie just turns to Robin and just like, so, about that time you squeezed my nuts. <laughs> Robin's like, hmm, I think it was pretty super. And then it just goes off from there. But that's a fan. That's another fanfic for another day. But yeah, they're an item in this one. Also, by the way, I believe it was. I believe I don't know when this was written. In fact, I know I think this was written in 2011. So this is this is a while back. But I think it was. Um, I think it was shown uh, after the Zo uh, right before um, right after Punk Hazard. I think it was shown that Robin and Nami actually share a bed. But yeah. Um, so yeah, Frankie and Robin are an item in this. So she's not sleeping with with Nami right now. Um, this resulted in Nami having an entire girl's room to herself most nights as she first enjoyed the privacy, but after a while she began to despise it. In the past, she had been able to wake up after particularly horrid nightmares of Bellamere's death, and Robin would be there to soothe her. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, I had a nightmare of my mother dying. Robin, please help me. It's like, okay, I will try to console you with a tale of the time my island got burned down and my own mother got shot right in front of me. I don't know how that would calm her down. Basically just like, you know... My life was shittier than yours. You lost a mom. I did too. In the, pretty much the same exact way. Shot right in front of me and, and died right in my arms. Um, right around the same age too. Except in my case, my, my island and everyone else I cared about was burned and, and killed as well. Um, so yeah. I don't think... Robin would not be my first person I would jump to to emotionally console me. <laughs> alright, you know, but alright. Um... Okay, however, now when she woke, there was no calm, reassuring voice to lull her back to sleep, only the blank, empty room staring back at her. Ba -ba boom She had to do something. She couldn't stand being alone a minute longer. Swinging her legs off the edge of the bed, she gathered her bedsheets around her for protection and made her way towards the cabin door, flinging it wide open. All right, so she runs out onto the deck of the sunny. Um, okay, so the rain pelted her skin, her exposed skin, mercilessly, stinging it where it touched. Is she still naked? Is she still, like, running outside naked? She gathered her bedsheets around her for protection. Oh, that's all she did. Okay, so she's still technically naked. She ran blindly forward, not knowing or particularly caring where she was going. Reaching a door, she grasped the handle and just flew inside, slamming it shut behind her. All right, so she just runs out into the middle of a storm and just like, Oh, crap, it's raining. Ah, it's so windy. And then she just 
opens the door and runs into it. Also, by the way, I think in this fanfic, I think all of the different members of the Straw Hats have their own room. Uh, they they all have, they have like a men's quarters and a female quarters in the actual manga. But in this, just to just for convenience's sake, I mean, it would be kind of hard to have sex with Luffy if you walk in and there's like every other guy is like like Usopp and Zoro are sleeping right next to him. You know, it you, it would be a little bit awkward. You know, right? So okay. She stood panting with her back against the door, trying to stop her body's insane quivering. The combination of fear and adrenaline made her super sensitive to the room around her. The figure in the bunk still slept soundly, despite the ruckus she had just made. There were some clothes scattered on the floor, and as she tried to discern whose clues that, who clothes they were, she heard the sleeper mumble. Ah, Sanji, meet! That's, that's, okay, that's, that's believable. See, okay, here is the issue involving Luffy in most Lemon fanfics, okay? Writing Luffy in this kind of context is extraordinarily hard. If you can do it in a believable way, good on you, all right? And, and even when I tried very briefly to write it, it was hard, because Luffy does not... He does not respond sexually to women. That's like, like occasionally, like the thing with the happiness punch at Alabasta, he'll respond that way. But I think that was more of just because Usopp was around him and he acted that way. Remember what happened with Boa Hancock? He was completely just oblivious, not even oblivious. He was not even phased at all by the sight of one of the most beautiful women in the world just taking off, well, being bare naked right in front of him with her bare boobs exposed. Not just her boobs, like other stuff too. Luffy just kind of stared at her and just like, Huh. You know, so it's extremely difficult. It's, it's almost impossible, I would say, to write Luffy in this context, because Oda just doesn't have him in this way. So you kind of have to take some creative licenses. And that was one of the reasons why finding a good fanfic to read, because a lot of times they just portray, they just kind of like portray Luffy as just someone who's straight up like, you know, I want to have sex with you now. And that's just not, like, Luffy would never be the one to initiate it, okay? Even in this, and in this context, he really isn't. So that's, that's what I was going for. Not, not necessarily like he, he's doing it like he's having it thrust upon him without consent we're not going on that path but luffy would never be the one to actually trigger it you know what i mean okay sure enough when she looked at the nightstand bedside the bed she could make out the familiar shape of luffy's fateful straw hat keeping sentinel over its sleeping master good use of the word sentinel why would i come into luffy's room of all places she wondered watching his chest rise and fall with each breath for a while she was content just watching him breathe and soon found her breathing calmed as well perfectly perfectly in sync with luffy's she shivered and finally realized the sheets had now the, the sheets that she held around her were soaking wet. She quickly let them drop to the ground. She blushed when she realized that she was only wearing a tank top and short shorts. Okay, so she wasn't naked. She sleeps in a tank top and in a tank top and short shorts. Which, by the way, given how Nami dresses in in just her normal everyday life, just walking around towns and places, tank top and short shorts. That's rather conservative for her. That's that's rather normal. Was this before the time skip? No, 2011. This was after the time skip. This was, I remember the time skip because I was, I was, I had just started my senior year in high school when the time skip happened in the manga. Um, and that was in fall of 2010. So this was about a year after that. So yeah, they were definitely up to the whole, you know, bikini Nami. So, um, okay. So she's, but she's soaking wet, you know, she's in Luffy's room. Okay. The action's really going to be picking up now. Okay. Uh, why am I worried about what I'm wearing right now? She asked herself. I usually wear way more revealing outfits than this around the entire crew. <laughs> okay, you, you, you pointed that out. It's like the fact that she's she dresses more conservatively to go to bed than she does when she's just walking around. Um, but, but for some reason, she knew clothing like this was awkward in this kind of situation. I, I would say what's more awkward is just standing over someone sleeping and just staring at them. I'd say that would be more awkward. What kind of situation was this? She didn't even know. But, but one thing was certain. She didn't want to be alone tonight. See where this is going. She crept over to Luffy's sleeping figure, holding a hesitant hand out towards him. Luffy, she whispered quietly at first. He didn't move. She poked him. Boink. <laughs> Luffy, she said normally. Still no response. Fine then. Luffy! She yelled. And that, that, that's a good scene. I, I, I read that part and I'm like, I could see that in the anime. You could, you could see that, couldn't you? Luffy's trying to... He's, he's conked out for the night. Nami comes up. Luffy. Luffy. 
Luffy! And then, like, her mouth goes a little jagged thing, like the monster face, and he's like, ugh, ugh. He still didn't wake up. She facepalmed. Imagine Nami facepalming. Who doesn't wake up to the cries of their Nakama? She sweat dropped. Then a thought came to her, and she smirked devilishly. Imagine Nami smirking devilishly. Hmm. Oh, Luffy. Meet. There was an instantaneous response. Luffy shot bolt upright in the bed, looking around to find the aforementioned item. But all we saw was his navigator. I'm imagining at this point when Nami was bending in to say, Luffy, meet. He, he shoots bolt upright and then you know, he gets a face full of airbag. That's, uh, that's you know, just boing. And then that's, that, that's the way I envision that. Nami, she, he asked groggily, forgetting about the meat. Okay, <laughs> they, they, put a, they put a little note here. Shocking, I know. Okay, you gotta keep, okay, you gotta keep the plot train moving, but I'll let you guys know, basically my idea for this fanfic involved, it, it involved using meat as the catalyst to get Nami to have sex with Luffy. That was essentially the plot of my fanfic, because I'm like, unless there's some type of food involved, like, Nami wears some kind of Lady Gaga-inspired meat dress. I don't think we're gonna get anywhere, but okay. I, I couldn't sleep. I woke up and Robin wasn't there, so... She paused sheepishly. This was sounding more and more childish by the minute, but the look of invitation to keep going on Luffy's face was so tempting, she found, her spell, uh, she found herself spilling everything. I think I may have had a nightmare. But the storm woke me up, and I was still scared, and the storm kind of scared me more. And then Robin was gone, and I didn't like being in the room alone, so I went outside to find someone to talk to, and before I knew, I was here! She ran out of breath, hiding her eyes behind her bangs. She snuck a glance up at Luffy. Oh my god, so the whole time she was like, Luffy, I'm sorry, I'm... Okay, so, you know, uh, portraying a little bit more of a softer side of Nami... Uh, a little bit more of a, of a shy, meek side of it. Uh, not, not really the type of uh, character traits we usually see Nami exhibit. She doesn't really... She only does that when she's trying to, like, you know, get money off someone. She'll act all coy and shy, maybe. And just like, you know, sir, maybe if you could help me out with a few few hundred thousand berries, maybe I could, you know, something like that. But in, in this case, it's a little bit more of an innocent... Hey, hey, you know what? I think we all have... We all have those moments in our lives, even though, like, the hardcore, like, I'm a badass move, you know, he's like, you know, maybe every now and then has a moment of, of, of shyness, of meekness, where they, you know, they're scared of something. Everyone has something they're scared of, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. He was frozen, trying to take in everything she had just told him. Nami scared? Sure, she could scream and run like Usopp when it came to a strong opponent, but to be scared of a dream? It was rarely that she showed her true emotions. He knew that she didn't want to be a burden to the crew with her worries, but it was just natural for her. She was Nami, and she was a warrior. Okay, I like that. I really do like that, because not only does that talk about how Nami, she's one of the weaker members of the crew, and how, you know, L Luffy knows this, and Luffy also, like, Luffy is not an idiot, alright? He's not, like, always just going around like a slack-jawed idiot. He he's aware of the strengths and weaknesses of the crew he knows about their personality and everything like that it's just that he doesn't he's not the one you go up to to have like a heart to heart talk with he's the actions speak louder than words with luffy all the time but in this situation it's just like wow yeah she's scared of a dream and and also that kind of speaks to luffy a little bit because luffy always believes in things he looks at things a little bit more simply in the world so to luffy's perspective you know being scared of a big strong opponent that makes sense but being scared of just a dream that might not be something Luffy really understands all too much, because the big strong enemy can attack you, that a dream is just a dream. So, he chuckled slowly. What? Nami demanded, pouting. He liked that. You worry too much, Nami. It was just a dream. <laughs> well, well, it's not just any dream. Luffy patted the bunk beside him. Sit, he ordered. She complied, ignoring that it was a command. I, okay, this... This makes sense so far. This seems like how Luffy would act. It's like, oh, Nami, it's just a dream. Quit being silly. It's like, but I was worried. I'm like, ah, come on, sit down next to me. Come on, let's talk. <laughs> I think I was back at my old house watching my mother being shot by Arlong again. He... <laughs> That, that's kind of a buzzkill when you're reading a, a lemon, imagining you know the only mother to an orphan getting shot by a freaking giant sh uh, sawtooth fishman. Not sawtooth. It was uh, well, sawtooth was I think his epithet. It was a swordfish. Um, he pursed his lips at this. They were even words to describe how much he hated that shark. So he growled instead. She smiled. Well, he's gone now. He won't ever hurt you. He won't hurt you or anyone ever again, Nami. I made sure of that. He crossed his arms. Yeah, she mused. I guess you did. 
Was this why I came to his room? Because he's the one who conquered my nightmare? She decided that yes, it was. Warmth spread throughout her entire body, and she sighed in contentment. The senseless fear finally subsiding, Luffy grinned at her relaxing figure and imitated her, slumping against the wall and sighing too. How is he able to calm her with so few words? And how... And, and such simple ones at that. The boy truly had a gift. She glanced over at him, taking in things she had never noticed before. Okay, so this is where we get a little, this is where we get into the territory, all right? This is, this is where we're getting into, we're getting into lemon territory now, guys. I hope you better, better get ready for this shit. Mm. Oh, that's sharp. Mm. That was not a smart idea. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> His abs were scrunched up from his slouching position, making them even more defined and chiseled looking than usual. His large hands rested behind his back, accentuating his broad shoulders and the muscles beneath them. His shaggy black hair stuck out in random directions, falling into his eyes. His legs were crossed before him, and she blushed when she realized that all he had on were a pair of red cotton boxers. Luffy's a boxer guy, not a brief guy. He's a real man. No, not boy, man. Luffy was going on 20 now. Sometimes she forgot how old they were. Nami is 20 in this context. She's 20 after the time skip and Luffy would be 19. Seeing how stuck he was in childish ways, or maybe it was just his innocence which made him seem so childish. Oh, she didn't know. She went back to staring at him. Luffy opened his eyes and looked at her and was surprised to see her looking at him. She looked a little hungry. Would you guys pay money for me to read erotic fiction as a career? Maybe I could sell some stuff on SoundCloud. Maybe I can make this my, my backup career in case the YouTube thing doesn't pan out. He didn't understand the look she was giving him. Well, not him, but rather his chest. He looked down at it. Everything seemed in order to him. So once again, this is well written in Luffy's perspective. You know, a hot, big busted girl is in your room at night staring at you with she's she's thirsty all right she's thirsty she's like licking her lips while she mm. the first thing luffy thinks of is there's something on my chest what the f it's on there <laughs> she hadn't noticed he'd noticed staring at her yet she hadn't noticed that he noticed her staring at him like like what you see she gasped. Was he flirting with her? He grinned. She honestly couldn't tell. She whacked him softly. I just think you might be getting fat from all that food you've eaten over the years, she teased. Nah, I'll never get fat. Rubber people don't ever get fat. <laughs> How would you know? How many rubber people have you met? <laughs> it's a good point. Mm, you're right. I guess I just assumed. This was, this was before Katakuri. Katakuri wasn't technically rubber, but you know what I mean. Baka. Okay, you... All right, your weeb is showing a little bit, but all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, look, everybody out there that's been a fan of anime, then you're an otaku, you've said baka in public before. Don't lie to me and say, don't lie to me and say you haven't. And, you know, sometimes it's met with a laugh. Sometimes it's met with like a huh. And sometimes it's met with like, oh my God, you are such a nerd. Thankfully, when I used it in public when I was in high school, I was in the presence of another nerd, and she exclaimed, I know what that means! She already had a boyfriend, so that's, that's the end of that story. In case you were wondering, why did you ask her out? Like, she had a boyfriend. She's actually getting married soon uh, to a guy that works right down uh, from where I am, at Dollar Tree. He works at the liquor store down there. They're actually getting married, and uh, I, I hope they live a nice life. Okay. Um, <laughs> they sat in companionability. So, uh, oh, wait, they sat in... In, they sat in silence for a few minutes, just enjoying each other's company. Then, Nami, do you want to stay here tonight with me? She blushed furiously at this. She blushed furiously. like She's like, mm, blush, blush, blush. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's the rest of the crew to think about, and especially, especially Sanji-kun. I was wondering when Sanji... Sanji makes... Several appearances in these Luffy, in these Luna fanfic, no, not Luna, because that just makes me think of fucking fairy tale. In these, uh, Lu in these Luffy Nami fanfics, and usually he's he's portrayed in a very sad way. And so, yes, what would he think? I don't. She trails off. This is Luffy speaking. Nami, what? You worry too much. 
Again, with so few words, Luffy put everything into perspective. What did she care what the others thought? She didn't want to be alone, so why shouldn't she? For once, she was going to put her own needs before the others. She wants to have sex with her captain, and by God, Cat Burglar Nami is going to get what she wants. Damn it. All right, I will. She smiled widely at her own decision. At least she thought it was her decision. He loved to see her smile. Just then, a particularly loud wind thundered through the ship and she shivered. Are you cold? Luffy asked. Well, I, didn't get a, I did get a little wet outside, so yeah. He retrieved his crumpled blanket, blanket from underneath him and handed it to Nami. She took it gratefully. The blanket really didn't do much because she was giving off that much heat for it to trap. She w wait, she wasn't giving off that much heat for it to trap. How are you not cold right now? She eyed his boxers and blushed. Eh, it's really hot in here. Are you coming down with something? He put a warm palm on her forehead. It felt great, so she leaned into it, humming. Luffy got an idea. I'm warm, so why don't you use me as a blanket then? Once again, totally a thing that Luffy would say. She gasped. Again, he probably didn't realize... Keep in mind, Luffy... Luffy is not thinking about sex at this point. He's not actually... It, it, it hits him at some point, like, some... Because you have to add the sex drive in Luffy, otherwise these things just don't work, right? So you have to add it in him, but you have to really... It's like chiseling through, like, a cement wall with, like, a toothbrush, you know? It's... You, you might be able to get there, but it's gonna take... It's like... Okay, better analogy. Andy Dufresne in the Shawshank Redemption, you know, just... It's gonna take a long time to tunnel through this wall, but we're gonna get to it eventually. That... That's basically the gist of this. You ha give Luffy a sex drive, make him aware of sex, but he's really dense in order to get through it. Whereas in the actual canon of the manga, there are times I question Luffy if he even understands what sex is at all. You, you know what I mean? Like, right. Because Oda... Oh, it's not that he just doesn't know. It's just Oda never goes there because it's a shonen. All right, nobody wants to know about who Luffy wants to bang, okay? Like, well, maybe you do. I don't know. But I think most of the readers of the manga don't want to know that. So we, Oda just stays clear of that whole, that whole segment usually. All right, so um, she gasped again. He probably didn't realize the implications behind his request, so she tried to ignore that awkwardness in her perverted mind and take him up on the author. Okay, it's page five, by the way. These are eight pages. He lay down flat, and she lay beside him, snuggling close to his warm side. This is perfect, he said. I'm hot and you're cold, so together we're warm. Luffy logic. Mm-hmm. He grinned stupidly, and for once she found herself grinningly stupidly back. She warmed closer to his side. She could smell she, she could smell wood, the sea, Sanji's cooking, and something musky that she couldn't identify. That must have just been pure Luffy. <laughs> come come on and try the new scent by the Straw Hat Collection. Pure Luffy. But right now I would imagine Luffy just smells like um meat and uh I guess rubber. Like, you ever smell a rubber band? I guess that's how Luffy would smell. I mean, yeah. But right now, she couldn't, she seemed to be occupied with something else. Everywhere in his gut, something began to nag at him. He was perfectly content a few minutes ago, but something was beginning to bug him. He tried to ignore it, but it became larger and larger. Oh my. Until he finally had to acknowledge it. It was a feeling that much he knew. But what did it want? He tightened his hold around Nami, and the feeling subsided briefly before coming back stronger than before. Ah, he thought, it he it wants Nami. I don't know why I don't know why this person put it wants Nami. Maybe he thought like to himself, like he wants Nami, or or the feeling that he's expressing. It, the feeling wants Nami. Alright, so this is this is where you're finally you're breaking through the wall. Alright, you're breaking through the wall. It took us a while to get here, and I know maybe some of you at this point were like, Matt, this isn't much of a lemon. We're not really getting a lot of we're not getting a lot of sex. You know, this is page five, and we're already still you know, just they're just in the cuddling position at that point. But like I said, if you get to it too quick, it's just, it doesn't feel natural. All right, it just feels like Luffy is a normal 19-year-old, and he's not, okay? He's just, Luffy could be called a lot of things. Normal 19-year-old, not one of them. Not on the resume, ladies and gentlemen. But, but we're finally getting to this point where there's that nagging little voice inside of his head that's like, Luffy, she's right there, you know, okay. Hot girl wrapped around you. Make something happen. He wrapped his other arm around her and pulled her closer to him. She squeaked this time, and the sound made her heart flutter. 
Nami was currently up close and personal with Luffy's chest. She couldn't deny that it was a wonderful view, but she was curious why he had decided to pull her to him. She decided not to question it and began to trace invisible longitude and latitude lines on his chest. Luffy shivered, but not from the cold. In fact, he found the room had just gotten a lot hotter. Oh my. A different feeling to start a different feeling started to assault him. What does this one want? He wondered as expatterly. I, I guess um, exasperated is, is the word, but it's, it's maybe a plural of exasperated. Just then, Nami shifted in his arms and her leg briefly rubbed against his own. Mmm, he hummed, liking the contact. Nami froze. What was that, she thought. Her mind hadn't registered yet, but her body was way ahead of her. At the hum of her body, temperature had risen drastically and the heartbeat sped up. She was blushing. Okay, so at this point, like, their bodies are just like, bone, bone, go, have at it, go do it. It's just, it's just that, like their minds are just like, is this like a few more just little strands of just like, is this cool? Because Nami's like, is this cool? You know, because, you know, Sanji could walk in on us or, you know, this is our captain here. And then Luffy's still trying to figure out how the whole sex thing probably even works at this point. Um, then it hit her. He was getting turned on. Luffy, he was, he was getting, she couldn't use the word. She almost burst out laughing just thinking about it. Fine, she would indulge his feelings a bit. He was a guy after all. Luffy closed his eyes, trying to feel as much of Nami as he could through their contact. She had stopped moving and this disappointed him a little. Why would I want her to be moving, he thought. But it does feel good for some reason. Just then, Nami began to move again and the heat had lessened, came back again, plus interest. She snaked her arms up between their chests and began to rub Luffy's shoulders. Ooh, giving him a massage. That's okay. We're getting started here. He could feel the muscles melting underneath her fingers as they needed areas that he had never knew existed. Her long nails dug slightly in some places, but that just added to the wonderful feeling. Nami watched as his figure went lax, trying to appreciate the full effect of her massage. I don't think this is an innuendo. They're not like straight up like boning right now. Like, like Nami is literally just giving him a massage. He was mistaking the cutest face. His eyebrows were slightly scrunched up while he simultaneously sighed in satisfaction. Mm. By the way, if I'm sweating, it is very hot in this room right now, also with the lights on me. So, um, yeah, but I figured it would be the appropriate, um, the appropriate environment for something like this. She knew the feeling. Whenever she got a massage, she got this stressed out, but also relaxed feeling. It was hard to describe. He looked like he was really enjoying it, so she was surprised when he stopped her, grasping both hands in his large ones. Luffy couldn't take it anymore. It was all just too much. Her closeness, the massage, the sound of the storm outside. His thoughts had become all jumbled, so he shut off his mind, and suddenly his body took over, knowing exactly what it wanted. So he's using like gamu gamu no idiot, but it's more like gamu gamu no sex drive. Before he knew, he had grabbed Nami's hands, stopping the massage. His gaze bore into her and she wiggled under it. That's it. He swooped in and claimed her mouth with his, taking her breath away. Okay, six pages in and they finally kiss. All right, Luffy and Nami have kissed. Many of you at this point are like, ah, so preposterous. But dare you see, you stay and see where this is going? Dare you? She was surprised at his action, but even more surprised with the way her body instantaneously responded. She fiercely pressed her lips back against his, fighting for dominance. It was all skin, soft, smooth, and wet. His tongue had just joined the fray. She gladly invited it in, me to get step forward. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God, this is, oh, man, when we get to actual bonage, this is going to be, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, okay. Meeting it step for step with her own. She arced her body into his chest and he slipped his hands to her waist and pulled her even more flush against his half-naked body. Finally, they pulled apart, gasping for breath. But Luffy wasn't to be slowed. He was on, an, he was on autopilot. He put his face onto her neck, breathing in her scent while trying to regain his breath. So, Nami smells like Meekins, parchment ink, and... Ozone. It was the same smell that the air took on before a storm. It was anticipation, excitement, and adventure. <laughs> Nami smells like adventure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 she does. She smells like adventure. She gasped, and he smirked against her skin, always gasping. She tasted salty. He bit down instinctively. Ah, Luffy. Oh, he loved that, the way she said his name. It had his way, it had his way she was going to say it a lot more often from now on. 
Nami hadn't expected the bite. She was still recovering from their first kiss. What the hell did he learn how to do that? She wondered. It must have been his instincts. So yeah, Luffy is literally running on, like, just autopilot at this point, which is, I think, the best way you could have this instead of Luffy all of a sudden, you know, knowing all these Don Juan sexual moves. It's just like, you know, I'm just gonna instinctually just do what the body... He's still 19, man. Okay. All right. It must have been his instincts, which was three quarters of what Luffy was made of. Then he was attacking her neck, muddling her thinking. The, bre the brief thought flashed through the, her mind that she had started something that she might not be able to stop. But as soon as it came, it flew off again. There was a delightful whoa, shit. There was a delightful pain, and she yelled his name. She felt his smirk on her skin. Jerk. She'd slowed him. She'd show him. Luffy was caught off guard when Nami pushed him away and flat onto his back. Okay, so... So Nami's taking the more dominance proposal at this point now. Luffy's flat on his back. Nami's on top of him. For some reason, this seemed to satisfy him even more. He took her figure, st sitting astride from him like some sort of goddess. He never realized how beautiful we she was until now. For this, for this scene, I want all of us to imagine lying uh, naked on our collective beds and, and Nami over us. Just, just picture that. Just have at it. Honestly, it's a good thing Luffy is just so oblivious about this because I think any any true man can admit um, five seconds if you're freaking lucky. <laughs> okay, for me probably one and a half and a half. Like okay, one instantaneous, instantaneous. It wouldn't even yeah. It would be like twice at the same time. It would just be uh, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't last very long. All right. Whew. You're a goddess, he mumbled stupidly, awestruck. What? she asked, confused. So beautiful. Like I said, a little bit of liberties here with the way of Luffy's dialogue, but that's fine. She looked at his adoring face, staring at her as if she were some sort of deity. Well, he had called her a goddess. She could get used to that. He needed a reward for that charming comment. She attacked his chest with her mouth. He was the one gasping this time as Nami pounced on him. Her mouth was all over his chest, leaving trails of fire and red marks where her lips lingered too long. Her tongue lift, licked the all over assaulted areas, letting the air chill the saliva. He noticed letting the air chill the saliva. He noticed she lingered longest on his abs, taking extra care to run her tongue plus her hands over them. She so he was right. She didn't like what she saw. You know, every now and then I think about getting abs. Don't really have them. But uh, the things you have to do to get abs and maintain them, like you have to stick to a strict diet. You have to have like no body fat around this area. It's just it's just too much of a pain in the ass for me. Um, yeah. So, uh, but it, when you're a rubber guy, I guess it just comes with the territory. Um, okay. Nami, meanwhile, was thinking the heavens that God had sent down such a fine specimen of male for her to toy with. Notwithstanding that he could be very dense at times, his body was still smoking hot. And it's all mine. Whoa, she paused in her, mis in an, er, in her menstrations, ministrations. Did I just say that Luffy was all mine? Nami? She looked down at the man she was currently neglecting. His face was flushed red from their heat. Long, raven locks stuck to his forehead. He was panting for breath, looking expectantly up at her with, get, gla with glazed eyes. That's it. You're mine. She gr okay, so she's going on full, like, lioness at this point. She's just like, screw it, and just <laughs> dives in. You're mine, she growled, placing her hands possessively on his chest. She was surprised when he laughed, still panting for breath. Of course I am. A king belongs to his queen just as much as the queen belongs to her king. Okay, referring to Nami as the queen, that's a little bit weird from Luffy's perspective, but the logic is sound. Huh? She tilted her head to the side and she thinks I'm the stupid one. Luffy decided to show her what he meant with actions rather than words. See, I just said that earlier. This author gets it. Huh? In an instant, Luffy had thrown Nami down on the bed, reversing their positions. He held her down, sitting on her stomach and pinning her arms above her head. All right, so Luffy is, has her pinned down now, holding her arms back, you know, in, in this position. So it's full frontal. And you're mine, he growled back. Then he made himself, then he made himself pretty clear. She shuddered at his dominance. He was too strong. She couldn't move an inch. He had rendered her completely helpless. Is anybody jerking off to this right now? Is anybody, like, seriously, like, just like, you know what, Tekking, I'm just going to turn you on audio only and just, just let it flow. 
<laughs> but hey, whatever. You do you. Uh, sorry for interrupting. I'll get back to it. She shuddered at his dominance. He was strong. She couldn't move an inch. He had rendered her completely helpless, using his strength against her and basically claiming that she was his. She loved it. Prove it, she snapped. He roughly claimed her lips with his once again. Luffy found he was liking this angry Nami. He didn't like the angry Nami that hit him for saying things or wanted to explore a particularly dangerous island. This Nami, however, brought out a side of him that he never knew before. A controlling, selfish part of him that he usually hid under the childish act. But in here, with her, he could let it all out. Best of all, she seemed to really like this side of him. Luffy still had her hands pinned above her head. She was helpless as he, as he started to move down to her jaw, then her neck, and then proceeded to her chest. She shivered. She wasn't wearing a bra. That, okay, that, uh, that's the most absolutely believable thing in this entire freaking fanfic. I mean, the way you're portraying Luffy, I mean, yeah, there's a few things you have to take artistic license with, but the, uh, the, 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 the no bra Nami, yeah, totally legit. Okay. Oh, getting really lemony now. Okay. And Luffy soon discovered that she wasn't wearing a bra. In order to not let her go, he began to slide her shirt up her stomach using his teeth. Ooh, this is getting sensual down at the last page. Okay, so now it's funny. I cut this off at page eight because I thought we were going to get into the heavy stuff by this point, and we did, but we just kind of got into it. So I might make this a two-part video now because I this has been what? This has been like, uh, this has been, oh shit, this has been 45 minutes I've been here reading this. So this is going to be a long video. So I think I'm just going to maybe make this part two. We'll see what the response is. If you want me to go more into detail with this, God, does he even know how sexy that is? She was, that's okay, that's a legitimate response. She was trembling in anticipation and nervousness. With one final yank and a devilish grin, Nami's breasts were exposed to Luffy. He didn't really see why Sanji was so attracted to these things, so he was bent on finding out. Seeing how he couldn't use his hands, he started exploring them with his mouth. Oh, you're going right into it, Luffy. Nami began to moan. Imagine Nami moaning, and wondered what he was doing to make her do that. Flattening his tongue, he administered, he administered one hard, drawn-out lick to one of the pink buds. Nami moaned hard. It felt so wrong, yet so damn good. She was quickly becoming a shivering mass of gelatinous pudding under his ministrations. Shivering mass of gelatinous pudding, okay. My question is, is there any type of pudding that isn't gelatinous? He continued heeding her moans and repeating things that made her moan loudly. I wonder, he thought. He took the left one into his mouth and gently bit down. Luffy! He was thrown into the air for a moment as she bucked her hips, managing to lift him where she'd bitten him. You're stronger than you think, he whispered in her ear. And that's all I have. That's the, that's the last part I have on this script. Um, I don't know what happened to the rest of you, but I can assume that the angels have the phone box. Listen, whatever you do, don't blink. Blink and you're dead. They are Fast. Faster than... Okay, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop with the Doctor Who reference. But no, seriously, um, yeah, we're just kind of getting into the meat of things right now. Um, it took a little while to build up to it, but I like that that build up. It really made it seem believable. Um, and now we're basically in the position of Luffy on top of Nami sucking her boobs, um, which is about the point that I think is... Uh, I'm going to blue ball you all and stop this now. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this, uh, thank you. <laughs> For the continued support, if you sat through all of this, if you really enjoyed this, then hey, I'm just glad I brought happiness into somebody's life for five to ten minutes. Um, and uh, look, if, if you want more of this, we can do more. I just assume that the rest of this, though, is going to be like full on, like we're going headlong into it. So I don't know exactly what kind of terminology is going to be used or what kind of sexual uh, deviancies I'm going to have to be describing. So for the sake of keeping it, I think this video is for the most part pretty safe to put up on YouTube. I didn't swear really that much. Um, I, I didn't really describe any real really over-the-top sexual acts or anything like the worst yeah you know he wanted to lick one of the pink buds hey from all your perspective luffy was just licking a flower there you go so uh yeah i think this one this part would probably be safe to put up on my main channel but in terms of like the next part that might have to go on my vlog channel or something 
Um, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for sitting through it. I'm going to get out of here now because this room is hot as hell. Uh, but uh, I, I hope you uh, enjoyed this reading of fan fiction, fan fiction theater, whatever I'm going to call this. <laughs> Signing out, everyone. Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh